Are you? Oh, oh, he's connecting. Okay. Audience. We are broadcasting. Hey, folks, welcome to the early arrivals. We're going to get started at the top of the hour here. Richard is having some, some technical difficulties. So if you're wondering why his face is so big in the senior <laughs> square. <laughs> why he's slowly turning sure. red. We're not sure if he can hear us, so we're going we're gonna to make fun of him all we can. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Richard, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Better like this? Better like this. <laughs> Richard may or may not join us, everyone, this morning for this every other Wednesday. I think we, we are at the top of the hour. We are broadcasting. We are recording. Welcome, everybody, to another fast-paced, fun-filled, lemon-scented, sun-drenched every other Wednesday. It is Wednesday, August 12th. Today is official, because I know some of you are wondering. It's official International Youth Day, Sewing Machine Day, Vinyl Record Day, IBM PC Day, World Elephant Day, and Milkman Day. So yes, it's an exciting Wednesday. This is the Culture Cup Club. I think we should we should open with karma, 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 chameleon. No, no. Okay, just I, think I think we should for you guy. Yeah. Let, let me introduce my fabulous, nice-smelling teammates. Uh, first of all, Sanjay <coughs> Nath, who is a leadership performance expert. Say hello, Sanjay. Hello, Sanjay. And Jeff Tobe out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the author and speaker of Coloring Outside the Line. He speaks on customer engagement and creativity. Say hello, Jeff. Hello, Sanjay. I mean, hello, Jeff. I got it wrong. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> this is the world's <laughs> worst vaudevillian act. We cracked the it. worst vaudevillian act in, in history. And last but certainly not least, also today in the fabulous state of Pennsylvania, is the one and only Richard Haddon. He of the Contented Cows brand, who speaks about employee engagement. Say hello, Richard. Hello, Mike. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Sanjay. And hello, Richard. Excellent. We can hear you, Richard, but you sound a little bit like you're in a foreign movie with a little bit. Un, un, okay. Well, <clears throat> well, that's because you know we, uh, as we learn this whole new uh, virtual, uh, everything we have to adapt. And where I am right now, it's a very nice hotel, but its uh, internet is uh, very questionable. So uh, you're seeing me through the internet, but you're hearing me through the telephone. Richard, did your air conditioning go out again? Is that why you're in a hotel? No, no, I'm actually working. I was actually working. Yeah, good, good. I'm working out of state. So I, I'm a, among the four of us. I guess I'm the one who has uh, is the most frequent flyer of the last five months because this is my third or fourth flight. You, you are so definitely. He is also he is also <laughs> Pennsylvania, so it's kind of like a foreign country, which is why the the bad dubbing of the audio. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Right. most yeah. most flying I've done is to my back. Deck. Anyways, introduce yourself, Michael. Oh, I'm Michael Kerr from beautiful Canmore, Alberta, author of The Humor Advantage, Why Some Businesses Are Laughing All the Way to the Bank. And as I said, this is the Culture Club. Welcome. We welcome your ideas, your suggestions, your comments in the chat box, in the question box. Pop your question as you as we go here. We will do our best to get to them. We've got some polls for you. We, we talk, of course, about all things culture here. We have had great conversations in the past about how important purpose is in driving success in a culture, why so many business leaders speak like idiots. Last week, we had, or two weeks ago, we had the br brilliant Camille Washington, the head of culture and employee engagement for FedEx International. We had a great conversation with her. And today, we're talking about the all-important topic of creating a jerk free workplace, a very important topic. So guys, I want to open up with a speed round as fast as we possibly can go. Let's just go around until we've exhausted our brains for a couple minutes here. What are some words or phrases or behaviors that come to mind when you think of a work jerk? Go, Sanjay. Well, the first, the, fir the first one is a word that I've always told my children not to say, so I'll, I'll not say it, but I think most of us can can get it. Next. Aggressive. Uh, unengaged. Apathetic. Hostile. Thoughtless. Hostile. Hostile. Uh, Selfish. In insensitive. Lack of empathy. Egocentric. Somebody hey, put it in the chat. Don't steal. 
that, that's a big one. Hey, I've, I've got a very specific one that I came across on the web. This is very specific jerk. This is boss jerk-like behavior, but it made me laugh. Somebody posted, there's a jerk sort of Hall of Fame website you can go to. And somebody posted how their boss gave them a $50 gift card for Christmas, but then deducted it off their paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't awesome. that brilliant? What else you got? What other jerk-like behavior do you got? By the way, I did that because it was for tax reasons. So, <laughs> oh, it was you. It was you. Yes, yeah, so pop aggressive. into the chat box, folks. What what do you what do you consider yeah. jerk like behavior at work? Well, passive aggressive would be one. That's a big one. Lack of communication, self centered, egotistical, narcissistic, noxious. We got. What about those specific? I, noxious, yeah. Specific behaviors like constantly checking their text messages. All right, Nazreen put taking credit, credit for credit someone's work. work. Yeah, Nazreen has said taking credit for someone's work, talking, <laughs> talking over others. <laughs> we would never do that. <laughs> we don't do that. Are we doing that? No, we don't. No, no, we never do that. We never do that. So, so yeah, give is, us it more, to, good stuff. is it fair to say, guys, that there's a whole range of jerk like behavior? I mean, not all jerk-like behavior is equal, correct? No, I agree. And, and I think we have right. to distinguish if we're talking about you know, jerks we work with or jerks as customers as well, or patients or clients. Uh, it might be something yeah. we want to talk about during this, this session. Yeah. yeah. Lack of integrity, lack yeah. of professionalism, all kinds of good ones. Yeah. Somebody yeah. said mic micromanaging. Is one being un being undermined constantly so you look bad? I have seen that That's telling a, someone nobody is to blame, but then blaming the employee. There's, yeah. there's there's so many behaviors. I actually looked up the synonyms for jerk, and there was over fifty synonyms that I found. One of my favorite being um, meathead, just your regular good old meathead, meathead. Uh, or meatball. You can call somebody a meatball if they're being a jerk. So let me ask you guys, have you ever worked with a jerk? And if so, <laughs> what did that look like? Culture club. I, yeah, I think we've all worked with jerks and worked for jerks. I wonder which is worse, working with a jerk peer or working for a jerk manager? Yeah. You know, I think I, I, we've all done it, but I, I worked with one specifically who was a, my boss. Um, who you would do something and he would always, always, always take credit for it. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, after a while, that's okay. You want to support your, your manager. You want to support your supervisor. But after a while, that's really a jerk thing to do. I had, a, yeah. I, I had a guy that I used to work with, and he was difficult to work with because he was very self-centered and, and, and such. But I would, I'm a very task-oriented kind of guy. So what I would do was I, I knew that as long as it was his idea – he always gave the go ahead. So whenever I wanted to do something, because I was more interested in getting the, the project done, I would go home and I will call him Billy. I'd go, hey, Billy, remember that idea you had? And I would just insert my idea exactly as it was. And he would go, yeah, yeah, that's great. Go do that. And I would get what I wanted. So, so that was a coping mechanism. But at the same time, the problem is when you're with a jerk, even if you find a way around it, it's not sustainable. And eventually you start going, I need out of here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we're going to get to that, Sanjay, yeah. the impact of jerks on the workplace, because it is huge. I remember one guy, he used to, if you just ask the tiniest little favor, like say, you'd say, hey, you know, you're going over to our other office. I left, my, uh, I, I left my travel mug there. Do you mind picking it up? He would always, always say, sure, I don't mind, but what are you going to do for me in return? <laughs> and I remember saying to him once, this is not the mafia. Like, do you have a mafia background here? This, you know, I'm just right. asking you a small favor. It's like, jeez. Yeah. So, so let me ask but, you this, you know, folks. Sorry, Richard. Well, I, have, I have another example. I have another yeah. example. Yeah. And, and this is actually excellent for me because it's been a long time since I actually worked with a lot of other, other people. But my wife, um, she had, a, she had a, a boss one time, a real jerk, who, um, and this was when our kids were young, and every time my wife had any kind of an issue that involved the kids that she, you know, one of them was sick, I was traveling, she needed to go pick them up or anything to do with the kids. This boss was just a jerk about that. You need to learn what your priorities are here. And, you know, it, you, it would have been bad enough had it been a man, but it was a woman uh, who was the jerk. And she didn't have children. And I think she resented anybody who had other, uh, other responsibilities outside of work. 
So I think we have to look at that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Richard, we're getting, we're getting a lot of uh, comments that if you want to, I know it's your job today yeah. to kind of look at those. So. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Complainer, jerk manager is harder to deal with. Somebody who plays favorites, definitely being undermined constantly. So you look bad. We saw that one. And then um, there was another one I didn't get to. Um, not offering to help or work, only doing the specific things uh, asked of you. That would be uh, jerk behavior, perhaps on the part of a peer. Um, let's see. Complainer. She never gave me any work. I was bored, out of my mind. Then she fired me when I took initiative. It's very <laughs> bizarre. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a boss who never makes a decision so he can never be held accountable for anything. Someone who never listens to you. That would be a lot of people. Uh, some people look for reasons to be offended. I look at it as a sense of entitlement. That is jerky behavior to me. Oh, God, you guys are really coming up with good stuff. Thank you, yeah. audience. Th these are these are also yeah. great fodder for Dilbert cartoons, are they not? Holy yeah. yeah, yeah. But wouldn't you guys agree yeah. that we have to determine exactly whether or not they are the jerk? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Just we need, just we need to create a jerk survey. Do you find yourself doing the following? Check, 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 and then you get a jerk score. <laughs> oh, okay, so so on that note, here's something I do in my workshops, and I'm actually for the for the folks listening in, I'm, I've just finished a draft of a book called The Jerk Free Workplace. Coincidentally, and I talk in the book about this very simple exercise I do, where I ask audiences to rate their own behavior in the workplace, their own overall attitude behavior on a scale of one to ten. So they write that down. So maybe you know, if you're on this call, think about that. Then I ask them how would you rate everyone else on your team on a scale of one to 10? Mm -hmm. And of course, what we find is about 80 to 90% of people rate themselves higher than everyone else. In other words, everybody adopts the mindset, you know, it's, it's, it's not me, it's them. If I didn't have to work with all these jerks, I could really get something done around here. I wonder if you can add a third yeah. question to that, which is how would everyone else on the team rate you? Well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so let me ask you this. Why We know jerk-like behavior is rampant out there in the world. And one of the things I say to, to my clients often is, you know, your, your culture is only as good as the worst behavior you tolerate. Why do we tolerate? Yeah. Why do so many workplaces put up with jerks and tolerate that behavior? What do you got? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to jump in because I think sometimes it comes down to skills uh, versus versus personality. And so, you know, this guy's the best at what he does. We have to put up with this, uh, with his jerkiness, <laughs> or, and we've talked about this before, or he's the best person for the job, whatever that is, we, come, we often put that much higher in our priorities. I, I'm going to jump on, yeah. thinking back on what you said, Mr. Kerr, which is, you know, you're saying the culture is only as good as the biggest jerk, but I don't think most people realize that. Most people can kind of say, hey, look, over here, everything is so wonderful and hunky-dory. Oh, yeah, that is a jerk. It, it doesn't really affect us. And they kind of write it off. And they try to make it seem insignificant and don't realize how much it actually peripherates through everything else. And, and it makes it a toxic uh, yeah. environment. Absolutely. Richard, what do you think? Why do we tolerate the jerks? <clears throat> well, I was going to say pretty much the same thing as Jeff. Jeff and I often draft each other's uh, thoughts. But, yeah, I, I think it's because usually... And if you think about it, sometimes people with jerk behavior um, <clears throat> are kind of, not always, but they, they might be extroverts. They might be, they're not shy and demure. And so sometimes that goes along with being creative, being, you know, hardworking. They do all this, they're driven. And I think sometimes people who are driven so much because they want whatever the object is or the objective is of the organization, they let it, they let the personal part, the emotional intelligence aside and their ambition and their desire to their drive, their desire to perform gets in the way and they just pummel over people, just run roughshod over people, not recognizing the importance of the emotional aspect of people working together. Right. Right. Well said. So, so before we get in, excuse me, to some solution, I'm getting choked up. It's such an important topic. Before we get into some solutions, Richard, can we launch a poll with the folks Let's, let's do that. Yeah. Let's, let's, oh, wait, let's wait, ask wait, a couple wait, of we, questions. We do have some. Hey, hey, can I just, we got four great comments. Can I just um, clear these sure. and then let's do the poll? Okay. Yes. So people, this was asking the question, why do we tolerate uh, that? And we're having 
people are afraid of confrontation, spe especially with the jerk, fear of repercussions. Yeah. So sometimes the jerk knows you're not going to you're not going to come at me for this. So this t behavior will be tolerated. It is the spiky person concept. Oh, I love that. It may have some That's relevance in innovation activities. Yeah, but very destructive to everyday culture, the spiky person. Uh, someone else says when the jerk is a leader, poor organizations care only about results, not about their people. Yeah. And failing to recognize that uh, being more concerned about their people is going to give them even better results. Uh, and often the jerk is the person who is selling much more than everybody else, even though he's a jerk to everybody in the office. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the real problem when you say, oh, oh well, you, you know, they're doing the best job in the office. They're doing the best job at what they're supposed to do. And it makes it really easy to defend uh, that person when, in fact, they're causing more harm than we can imagine. Right. So let's, yeah, let's start a poll. So let's, first let's poll, poll. Let's, says, let's ask the question. Um, let's, let's do the poll. Have you ever quit because, oh, there we go. Let's do that one. Oh, no, let, let's do the one in order. <laughs> let's do them in order. Good idea, Richard. Do you think a jerk can ever truly change their ways? Yes or no? A simple yes or no? So we'll we give can you a few seconds. Yeah, there's a button for that. I will, I'll let us vote on the next one. While we're waiting, I just want to mention that one of the, the person, I think it was Brian, who said that it's a reflection of the organization. Um, I think that's key to everything we're talking about with culture, right? It, it really yeah. is upper management tolerating this kind of behavior. That's that's yeah. a huge part of the culture. So yeah, I, I don't, maybe somebody who works well, and setting the tone, especially if, if especially if upper leadership behaves in a jerk-like fashion, then everybody says, "Oh, well, this is acceptable behavior here," and then they just uh, proliferate it. Oh, it's, it's I huge. More thought with what happens is when we get obsessed with only one dimension of measurement, for example, hey, he or she sells the most, therefore we put up with their crap. Um, it's the same thing with when we get into food and we go, hey, calories are bad. So we're going to make this drink at zero calories. Now it's got this toxic sugar to make it easier, but we're only measuring calories. So therefore, it's, it's, we've reduced the calories. So if we're only looking at the one dimension and not the whole big picture, um, we get obsessed with only fixing that one piece and overall the whole organization suffers. So when you take the holistic approach, yeah. you realize that, yeah, the jerk may sell more, but overall they're losing more because you have to now hire new people because more people, your, your, uh, uh, <laughs> your, your turnover is higher and you got to train more. So you may sell more here, but overall still costing the organization. Yeah. So what's, what's our poll results, Richard? Can you show them, please? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, did they not show on the screen? I'm sorry. I thought I knew these things. Uh, but the answers are yes, 63% and no, 38%. So a formidable number of people think that uh, kind of a tiger can never change his stripes. Uh, okay. But uh, slightly more than that, or, 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 well, no, not quite twice as many, are saying, yeah, jerks can truly change their ways. Okay. That's Let's, interesting. Can we, can we launch the next, can we launch the poll, Richard? Have you ever quit your job because of a jerk? I'd like to know. Yeah, let me do that. Oh, I can actually share results. Let me just yeah, keep doing this. And so now we should be able to see the, we, we the believe you. results for that first one. Okay. I'm just having fun here with Zoom. Uh, stop, share results, do that. Now we'll go to the next poll. And the next poll is the one that you wanted. As we wait with bated breath. Yeah. There. Nope, that's the same question. Same one. <laughs> Sorry, he couldn't get his sound to work. Why are we maybe, maybe we should maybe we should have picked somebody else to do the polls. Okay. Why is it only showing me the first one? Okay, Richard, don't 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 sweat Sorry. it. I'm gonna ask you guys a little trivia question because let's start I want I really want to get into some some solutions here for folks right but but let's understand that there's a huge impact so um came across this survey uh so let's i, I want to ask the culture club and feel free to chime in on the chat too what you think the answer is what percentage of people said in this massive survey that they quit their jobs because of a work jerk what percentage left their jobs what do you 85 think? 85 i would say 80 at least Wow, you guys are, and yeah, the chats are coming in 80, 75%. You guys are very pessimistic. The correct answer was 12% have only said they quit their job. Wow. 
But what percentage well, said I know they, I, I know I'm one of that 12 percent. Yeah, I would have said yes to that. What percentage said they lost work time just worrying about a jerk? Oh, that's huge. Well, I'm going to have to adjust my numbers way down because I thought it was 80. So maybe 20. I think 95. I'm going to say 50. All right. And again, I, I, I think Jeff was the closest there. 80 percent said they've lost work time worrying about a jerk. <laughs> now, here's a really disturbing one. What percentage of employees admitted that they took out their behavior on a customer because of a jerk, a work jerk? Oh, wow. How many admitted or how many did it? <laughs> how many how many admitted? Oh, I saw a very I saw a correct answer in the chat box. What? Yep. How many admitted to taking out their frustration working with a jerk on a customer? I think 40%. 45. I saw 45 in the chat box, so I'm Richard, stealing that answer. You're stealing I, our participants. Yeah, I, I would I would say at least half. I would say at least half. Uh 25% was the correct answer. And finally, the last trivia question, what year did the movie The Jerk come out? <laughs> 1978. Oh, so close. So, oh, we got people weighing in. There we go, Sheila, 79, 1979. 1979. Okay. Starring Stu hey, and what yeah. famous celebrity had a cameo in that movie that got cut? Does anyone know? Donald Trump. Nobody would know if it got cut. Hey, I'll give, I'll give a prize, Trump, somebody said. <laughs> it was Bill Murray. Had a had a, a scene in there. Okay, guys, let's hey, let's talk listen, solutions. Listen, we, we, we've got the, we've got some really good. Speaking of solutions, we've got some uh, other good comments uh, that we didn't talk about. And like, who is Darth Vader? Where how did how did Darth Vader get into this? Okay, but anyway, um, we talked about. Did I miss Jane that? Okay. Wait. Okay, yeah. So we have a comment from. We have a lot of uh, comments on the percentages, but we have a comment from someone who says I'm an executive coach and I'm often brought in to work with clients who are jerks who need to improve their emotional and social intelligence. I have seen a good number improve their ways, but only if they really want to. Obviously, Darth Vader doesn't want to. Really good point. <laughs> Laura, I think that's fantastic. And as a matter of fact, I want to ask, yeah. what percentage did she, would she guess then? Uh, if you wouldn't mind putting in there, what, percent, what percentage uh, do you think changed their ways because they want to? Of the, of the of clients that you work with. Anyway, let's go on and we'll look for that. Okay. Yeah. So, so guys, let's, let's talk first about, you know, I'm all about prevention. So, so what can we do to prevent jerk-like <laughs> behavior in the first place in our workplaces? Well, I think some of it comes from the inherent stress that's in the workplace. I mean, I, I don't, I haven't seen any particular studies on this, but it would seem to make sense. It would seem logical to me that if stress is at particularly a, a high peak in the organization, that it is going to promote more jerk-like behavior. People who have a tendency to be a jerk, that jerk behavior is gonna show up. But if things are a little bit calmer, if we can do something to reduce the stress in the workplace, then we might not see as much jerk-like behavior. I don't know, does that resound with anybody else? I would say Apparently that not. <laughs> Uh, I would say that it has to do more. Well, I mean, we keep coming back to this. It's the culture you create. If you have an environment where it's not tolerated to be a jerk and it's self policed through peer relationships and, uh, rather than mandated by rules and some plaque on the wall. But if people say you're being a jackass back off, that's not how we do it here. Either people are going to do one of two things. Are they going to go, Oh, all right, sorry. And then alter, or they're going to continue their behavior, keep getting resistance, eventually going, this isn't a fit for me and they're going to leave you at natural attrition. The idea of that one of the best ways to, to grow a lawn without weeds is not actually using pesticides. Uh, it's actually having such strong grass that the roots are so strong that it actually chokes out the weeds. So if you look at it from an employee standpoint, if we empower our people enough to kind of go, this is the environment and the workplace that we want to create. How do we, how do we sustain that? How do we grow that? How do we support one another that if someone comes and tries to violate us, uh, like a dandelion, how do we choke them out? You know, I want to support what Brian wrote, and I want to just talk about that quickly. Yeah, I, don't be I know jerk. what you're going to say. It's a good one. Don't be a jerk yourself. Support everyone, including the jerk. And I think that it all comes back, and you're going to get hard to do. saying this, but it all comes back to communication, right? Uh, it's truly, yeah. my wife is a, a workplace mediator. So if I've learned nothing. I thought you were going to say my wife is a jerk, and I know that not to be true. <laughs> uh, 
but she's a workplace mediator. And if I learned one thing from her, it's that so much mediation that happens wouldn't happen if somebody had just listened to the other person. So yes, they're a jerk, but maybe we need to listen between the lines, figure out why they're a jerk and, and how we can address that if it's our role to do that. Now, I know that a lot of people work for jerk management and that's much harder to do. And that's a whole other topic we could tackle as far as how to manage up. Uh, but I, I really think it comes out of listening and, and kind of being your own mediator as well. And not just dismissing the jerk because everybody brings something to the table. Well, and, and I yeah. think, Jeff, on that note, too, uh, being careful of making assumptions. And, and we, we never know what's going on with another person at work, right? We never know what's going right. on below the this, this surface, stuff they might be dealing with in their personal life. So, so assuming as a starting point that people are coming from good intentions or maybe they just don't know that their behavior is being jerk-like. But, but back to Sanjay's point, and I, by the way, I do agree with you, Richard. I mean, stress fuels jerk-like behavior. If people are feeling stressed, they're tired, they're fatigued, they're overworked, of course you're gonna start behaving in a, in a more of a jerk-like way. But when we talk about prevention, and I wanna, wanna piggyback on what Sanjay said, how do we though create that culture where people are going to speak up? I, I wanna jump into and, and kind of piggyback a bit on Brian's comment about support the jerks. The reality is, People don't purposely wake up and go, I want to be a jerk uh, for the most part. Right. People are exhibiting jerk behaviors because they think, oh, that'll help me climb the corporate ladder. Oh, that'll help me look good. Oh, that'll help me get my bonus or whatever it is. So a lot of times, and this goes back to the communication comment, if we can understand and express and help them articulate that they can get what they want in a different form, people are more often- Without being a jerk. Without being a jerk, absolutely. Because yeah. they're not interested in necessarily the path as much as they are the destination. And so, I mean, yeah. that, that idea of, of maybe showing them another way, kind of going, hey, if you want the best out of your people, rather than challenging them, maybe being supportive is going to be helpful with, with this person. And, and so, yeah. I mean, we got to understand that they don't wake up in the morning twisting their mustache going, here's my evil plan. How do I, you know, world domination today? Um, a lot of times, jerks don't realize they're being jerks. Right. What about? Well, let's go back to. Let me just. We had a. We asked Laura a, a, to answer a question for us, and she did. And th that was when Jeff said, "You know, what would you think is the percentage in your practice and your uh, experience of people who can change?" And Laura says, "If they really want to, I would say 60 to 70 percent. 60 to 70 percent are actually successful." But then, um, very similar to what something Sanjay was just saying, Nizreen said, "The organization I work for promotes radical candor." radical candor which can help prevent jerk behavior I, that's a that's a great comment and yeah just yeah. again looking for solutions yeah that sounds very that. much like like the uh -huh. netflix culture where they promote they yeah. promote open and honest feedback <laughs> they train people they mentor people on that and they have a wonderful policy at netflix that they enforce where you are not allowed <laughs> to talk or gossip about somebody behind their back so if I go to Jeff and start griping about Sanjay and what a pain in the ass Sanjay is, Jeff would stop me in my tracks and say, whoa, you need to go and have a conversation with Sanjay. I don't want to hear it. And they enforce that 100%. What about hiring, guys? We haven't mentioned hiring. Isn't it kind of important to get your hire and not hire jerks to begin with? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, well, Fred, Frederick in the comments box, Frederick says hiring for fit. I think finding the right workplace makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. so uh, and, hiring and I, people... Yeah, who are not jerks, it, to the degree that you're able to, to find that out in the, in the beginning. And I know there are, uh, you know, everybody probably has an example of somebody who came across in the interview and they went through psychological testing and, and predictive index and, and everything else and they came out, com you know, perfectly well adjusted. And when they got there, they were a jerk. But I think the more that we can uh, apply that kind of science, we're not going to, it's not going to be 100%, but it does improve our chances of getting a jerk free employee into the building. Yes, but, <laughs> and I think the yes, but, yes, is, but is if upper management or the owner of a company, if it's a small company, is so focused on bottom line results, they make jerks. You know, I, I think yeah. that they don't come in, people don't come in as a jerk, but you know, someone mentioned sales as a great example. You know, if it's so, so competitive internally uh, in sales, somebody can easily become a jerk. And, and I've seen it happen over and yeah. over again, so. 
And but I mean, we can still argue in terms of prevention, man, you got to do, you have to invest in your hiring and make sure you're not hiring. As so many leaders are saying these days, we do not tolerate brilliant jerks. We do not hire brilliant jerks. We don't care how smart they are. If they're a jerk, we don't want them. It's, it's the prevention versus treatment uh, argument, right? And they say in healthcare, I don't, I'm making up the numbers, but it's, they say well over 90% of our healthcare dollars goes to treatment rather than prevention. And one of the reasons is it's so hard to measure. Because yeah. if I can um, equip kids and educate kids to not smoke and to not drink, and you know I can avoid cancers or I can avoid other illnesses, it's really hard to show what you avoided versus someone has a heart attack when they're 60 because they've been smoking all their lives. We go, look, we saved them. Uh, and, and it's the exact same thing. If we can put more resources up front in terms of practicing and maybe it's more, uh, more rigorous testing or uh, simulations or whatever it is to avoid those jerks, in the long run, it actually does save us. Yeah, absolutely, Sanjay. Yeah, I mean, prevention is everything, right? So making sure too, when we're, we're not just hiring people, but when we're doing the onboarding and training that we talk about it right up front, that we mentor and coach people <laughs> on, on their behavior, what's acceptable and what is just not <laughs> tolerated. Um, I, I want to back, Steve had made a comment saying, uh, do, do you think particular cultures encourage jerk behavior? And I wrote, I absolutely I think they do. Uh, usually not yeah. on purpose, obviously. They're doing what, you know, right. they get obsessed with the bottom line and they get tunnel vision on that and then they forget. But I think here's a really, really big thing, which is silence is approval. So a lot of times when we let people get away with the behavior and people kind of go, oh, well, that, that's accepted. All right, that's fine. Like going back to what you're saying, uh, the, the no gossip rule, um, Mike. If there's a no gossip rule, that's fine. I'm not a huge fan of rules because rules kind of be forced on, on people. You can just say whatever rules you want. Well, it really catches on when the employees actually buy into it and they go, no, Jeff, stop telling me about how bad Richard's hair is. Go talk to him about it. Uh, so once you can make that leap from something abstract on a piece of paper to concretely people actually, you know, be, being one of the unwritten rules within the organization, it's where I say, talk to the hand. I don't want to hear it. You're wasting my time. Uh, that's, that's the big leap. That's what you need to, to be able to cross that bridge. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hey, so we, we've kind of segued into this question, but let's, let's carry on. I'd, I'd love to hear some specific strategies. You know, we, we, could, we have to do what we can do to prevent it in the first place, but let's assuming, you know, some jerks get out of their cage. Uh, what do we do now when jerk-like behavior happens in our workplace? How do we cope with that? Tranquilizers. Uh, <laughs> what do we do? Well, we certainly we don't. Re well, we do, we don't reward it, and sometimes that's exactly what we do. We see jerk-like behavior, and that person gets, you know, that person gets an extra uh, orange in their stocking that that Christmas, so, or whatever. Uh, how are we reward people? So we got to make sure that we're not rewarding it. One of the things I teach my clients is to time travel, <laughs> and I think this is one of the solutions. What do I mean by that? I think we need to ask ourselves. How is this, you know, in, in next week, how will I look back at what just happened? Uh, does it affect yeah. me personally or, or does it affect me pr uh, professionally or am I just super aware? And so you need to time travel and, and ask yourself the question, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, you know, how am I going to feel about this? And I think it just puts it in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I, and also, obviously, companies need to do some kind of internal research, whether it's surveys or polling or whatever they do to, to um, see what is happening within the organization. And if you're doing a survey and if it's done right, then it will uh, be down at the manager level. And so what we often see, because in our company, full disclosure, we, we conduct employee surveys as a service. But what we often see is that one company might have a really pretty good score overall, but there will be three or four pockets. Uh, where there are some problems and when we delve down into it, we see jerk-like behavior. And so obviously you got to ask the questions, you got to do the research and, and find out, you know, where it's going on. But then that's also where, um, you know, to, to talk about our friend, Laura, the executive coach, where um, executive coaching can really, I think, really uh, have a positive uh, effect because so often I've found that people, you know, they're perceived as a jerk, but not by themselves. We talked about that earlier. Uh, but when we come to them with overwhelming evidence that, you know, you know, your mother may love you, but your work, uh, <laughs> people at work think you're a jerk. 
Um, and when Here's people, the some people even say, yeah, yeah, some people are going to say that, see that as a badge of honor. But I think seriously, most people would be humbled by that and would say, okay, if that's really how people view me, I really do want to want to change my behavior. Not everybody is going to fall into that category, but certainly some would. So I think surveying and then when we see that there's a critical concern that we really do uh, sit down with the person and have that hard discussion and say, this is affecting your career. Uh, it's affecting your work and it's affecting your reputation within the, or in the organization. And we want to help you overcome that. Yeah. R you know, Richard, speaking of, surveys, one, of, one very specific tip I have for people is to just share those surveys you come across online. Those, there's so many of them, right? Like the top 10 work jerk behaviors, the top 10 office pet peeves, the top 10 things that drive everyone batty at work. Just share those because then that becomes a really safe way. You're not singling anyone out. You're just raising awareness so that hopefully some people will go, oh, gee, number three. I think I sometimes do number three. And you just raise yeah. awareness. Safe I, way. Want to, I want to address what a bunch of people have asked, and that is, you know, especially in the hiring yeah. process, how do you, how do you, um, you know, how do you hire and not hire a jerk uh, and be careful of HR and legal things. And I, I think that, that it comes down to what we've talked about over and over again, is making it very clear to candidates what your culture is, right? Yeah, and what the culture is here, it's like a mission or your mission statement and, and ask <laughs> specifically about your culture or mission statement. And, and I think that gets around it. You can kind of get an idea of whether or not they're gonna be a jerk in any situation. Yeah. Um, I know what you're doing there, Michael, so. <laughs> the shameless plug. <laughs> you're being a jerk. <laughs> Michael, if you want to know how jerk. to not hire for a jerk kind of person, I highly recommend the book Hire, Inspire, and Fuel Their Fire, where I go in depth about the importance of hiring for attitudes and how to do that and how companies are rocking it in terms of making sure that they also disqualify people that might have jerk-like behavior. And I also say that I wrote the book Coloring well, Up the It has nothing to do with hiring jerks, but I just wanted to put in a shameless plug as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in a hotel and I don't have any copies of my book here. Michael, seriously. Got okay, a question. we're getting oh, off Mike, topic Mike, here. Mike. I, actually, uh, no. I actually said this uh, a couple of calls ago was, I, I can't remember the context, but someone is telling me that when they were during their hiring practices, they said that when it comes down to just, you know, like there's two candidates left and it's, it's pretty close and there's, you know, either one that we'd be happy with, you would ask the question, do I see myself playing volleyball with this person? And if the answer was yes, that was the tipping the scale. And that really had to do with a, a fit of culture. Yeah. So obviously volleyball was important within this group and maybe they had a, 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 a company team or what have you, but that, that's the, what, we're, what you're looking for. It's that informal, not check the box, you have the degree, you have the certification. It's the, can we connect on a level that you're gonna fit in here? Yeah, yeah, and Sanjay, on that note, that one of the things that some companies do is they, what I call back check candidates. So they will go back and ask the receptionist, hey, how was this person when they came through to the interview? Uh, and they mm -hmm. check with the shuttle driver and the other employees that they interacted with to see whether it was all just a facade that they were putting on in the interview. Great idea. And, yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. And another yeah. thing, I, I think it's well, barrel health call centers, when they, um, hire somebody for a supervisory position, they purposely take them out to lunch to see how they interact with the wait staff because they have this wonderful yeah. theory that how a person treats dogs, kids, and wait staff is a really good indicator as to their true character. And I love that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I had a client one time who, uh, in considering promoting people into management positions, this was back when people traveled for business, uh, he would often advocate going on a business trip with that person because he said, not only do you see how they treat the wait staff, but you see uh, the, the airlines and other people in the hotel. And he said that was a really good qualifier to him as to whether or not this person needed to be uh, promoted to the next level or still needed some development before they could do yeah. that. I, you know, I, I feel like I've maybe talked about this on an every other Wednesday, but there's a company in San Diego called Red Door Interactive that I interviewed, spent some time with. They have just one overarching value, and it is that we are a 100% jerk-free workplace, <laughs> which I love. So they promote that in their hiring. They, they make a big deal of it, yeah. And, and Jeff talked about this early on in our, our call here today. 
They do not tolerate jerks, whether they are employees or partners or suppliers or customers. And the president of that company was telling me how they've, they've said goodbye to some pretty sweet contracts because the customer was a jerk and it wasn't That's worth awesome. it and it doesn't yeah. fit into their value. But here's the key to their success. They talk about what that means to be a jerk and what it doesn't mean to be a jerk. So they bring it down to specific behaviors and attitudes that everybody needs to practice to create that rocking workplace. Haven't we said so, that's what yeah. culture's all about? It's, it's, it's defining those behaviors and attitudes. And yeah. I think that's where a lot and of And what you tolerate. A lot of I, I think a lot of organizations are, uh, get into trouble because they, they talk about their culture, but they haven't defined those behaviors and attitudes. I, I think that's a great way you're saying that they actually went one step further. So I, I've always enjoyed poker. And there's a tournament I play in, uh, in Waterloo, Ontario, and, and they do it every kind of quarter. And it's just a really laid back, fun game. It, and it's, it's very unique in, in that regard. And when it, it says in all their material, they have one rule and it's a no a-hole rule. They actually don't say a-hole, they actually use the real word. Uh, but they're like, you know, if you're here to, to try to be a jerk, go somewhere else. And, and I like it how more and more organizations are willing to call people out on it. Because the more we, once we get to that critical mass, then People are going to be like, all right, I've had enough. I, 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 this behavior is no longer tolerated, whether it be jerk behavior or racism or sexism or whatever. Look at the history. When enough people kind of bring it to the forefront and no longer accept it, that's when we make the real changes. Here, here. Can I just say, I, and I'll totally, I know we're running out of time and we need to wrap up, but I want to thank everybody today because we've had more comments, I think, than we've ever had in yeah. the Wednesday. And I just wanted to comment yeah. that. You know, although Richard is doing his job as, as, as monitoring these, but everybody can read them as they come through. If you have a question, I hope we answered that. So thank you all for- And also, also, you know, Zoom is supposed to send you a transcript of this. I found that sometimes they're truncated, but before we sign off, I'm going to copy and paste the entire uh, string and I will put that into a document. And when you get your email tomorrow with the video link, and, oh, are we recording? Oh, yeah, we are. Uh, when you get your email with that, uh, you'll also get um, a PDF with this entire um, thread because it really, this is extraordinarily helpful what I, you guys have said. I also want to mention that if you're new to e Every Other Wednesday, you can go to eowednesday.com and we've got uh, all the prior recordings there. You can just click on them and watch them at your reading. <laughs> Hey yeah. guys, before, before we do our official wrap up, can we go around the room and everybody just one final comment on this topic? Let's start with you, Sanjay. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a jerk. I, I would say if you have somebody Sorry, who's that, not that usually a jerk. That wasn't my comment. I was just yeah, talking no, that about was serious. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. No, seriously, I think if, uh, if you have somebody who's not ordinarily a jerk and suddenly they begin to display jerk-like behavior, um, you have to be careful about prying and about doing things that you may not be qualified to do, but it may raise a flag that there is something going on. It may be um, psychiatric, psychological, physical, emotional, family, whatever, and just simply let them know that you care. And if you do that, they may um, then disclose to you a way that you can help or connect them with someone who can help. And my, my, my two cents are, are, you know, there's a difference between tolerating and empathizing. And I think empathizing comes first. Promoting, yeah. Yeah, I think we need to empathize a little bit. And like uh, I think Michael said, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Yeah, yeah, I like that, Jeff. Start, start there. But at some point, you've got to make the, the tough decision. So my final thought is this. Even in some of the most happiest, high-performing, family-focused, rocking cultures I've researched around the world, it doesn't mean they don't have low expectations. In fact, just the opposite. Some of the most high fun organizations have ridiculously high expectations. So they will do things like go to an employee with their personnel file from when they hired them 10 years ago and say, hey, uh, Susan, we've got your hiring file here. And it says right here, you were a people person. What happened? <laughs> and they hold them accountable. What kind of people? <laughs> yeah, they hold them accountable, and if necessary, they make the hard decision to let them go because they recognize the cost is too great, tolerating a brilliant jerk. So I hope everybody got a few seeds of ideas. This is a huge topic, so we'll, we'll circle back to it, I'm sure, in different forms throughout yeah. our every other Wednesdays. On Sunday. that note, if I can uh, yeah, add yeah. on, and as you know, because a handful of you have already taken up us, uh, on this offer, where we offer 
one or two or three or four of us on a strategy session, a 45 minute strategy session where we just talk about your organization and how, you know, ideas, what, what we can maybe do to help. Um, like I said, I, I know a handful of people have taken us up on that uh, and the feedback has been tremendous. So if you are interested, we forward our request to Jeff and it's Jeff is just, it's, it's his email, Jeff at jefftobe.com. And you can see how it's spelled out right from his picture, Jeff at jefftobe.com and just put in the topic uh, and the subject strategy session and we can arrange that for you. It's no cost and uh, we're just looking forward to seeing how we can help. Fabulous. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I'm going to turn it over to Richard now because he will be the cat herder for our next Every Other Wednesday. That's right. And watch out because I'm highly allergic to cats. So we're going to make sure that that's an interesting experience. But listen, join us in two weeks. If today is August the 12th, then that's going to be August the 26th. And we're going to be back and we will determine uh, a topic for that time and we'll let you know what it is uh, in the meantime. Tomorrow, everyone who was here and who was not here should get an email with the link to the video and also to our chat uh, thread. And there will also be a link to eowednesday.com where you can uh, find out some other things. So thanks again for being here, everybody. It's been great to see you, see you in, in uh, quotation marks, and we'll see you every other Wednesday. Schedule, Bye now. Schedule your free strategy call. And, and don't be a jerk. <laughs> Bye, guys. Don't be a jerk. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. See ya.